Levy this Tuesday, the 13th day of December 2022. We are coming to you live online and on air from Broadcast House here on Nile Avenue. And let's get started. The lead pastor of Miracle Center Cathedral Church, Robert and uh, Jessica Kayanja, are sure that uh, through modern agriculture, Karamoja region will transform as poverty levels uh, will drop. They conveyed the message at a fundraising dinner for a long special Christmas festive collection package for food and other items to Karamoja region held at Miracle Center Cathedral Church in uh, Rubaga. Take a watch. Months ago, Karamoja sub-region grappled with famine, prompting government, non-government organizations and individuals to run to their rescue. The Guru Samaritans provided assorted foodstuffs that included maize flour, beans, sorghum, wheat, to mention but a few to a number of households in the region. Miracle Center Cathedral Church through the Karamoja Outcry and Food Bucket Project initiatives was one of the charity organizations that aided the region with food items. Miracle Center Church also launched a long-term response to the food crisis strides in Karamoja, providing heavy machinery that included tractors, oxen plows and seedlings for Karimajong people to grow their own food. Even with much hope as the region waits for the harvests, Miracle Center Cathedral last night organized a fundraising dinner to raise money to provide food and support families in the Christmas season. Planning a big Christmas, we are taking part of the money we have raised is to help them go through Christmas and next year. This is going to be a very long weekend. Christmas is on Sunday. So when you start it on Friday, Easter Monday is on Tuesday. Pastor Robert Kayanja is optimistic that the statement that goes poverty drives hunger will fade out as agriculture will redeem the region. Because food does not grow tomorrow, they have to go through Christmas and through January as the maize and the beans are growing. So we need more support. So that's why a three-pronged approach on this dinner. Also in attendance for the fundraising dinner were other pastors from Africa and beyond, a delegation team from Karamoja, and the guests from across the world. I'm Ivan Juko for UBC News. Now, members of different political parties under the National Consultative Forum have met and discussed issues to do with human rights protection in the country. Chaired by Jolie Mujisha, they have urged political players to always dialogue and find solutions to the different issues for the good of the country. Be one of the, persons that in the nature of the rampant human rights violation in the country, we have resolved that since we are a body, that fronts aspects do with engaging in dialogue. We have resolved that the issues of human rights violation that border into security, let it be a matter that we shall stage at the national dialogue. And then uh, if, if you are going to point fingers at each other, I don't know how much or how far we are going to go. We want to negotiate with the government and bring peace to this country. It is within us, the political players, that we need to bring peace. This kind of bring, showing ourselves as if we are also presidents or what, we want to show that we are big, we want to move as if we have, and the people who are suffering are the common people. We have been agitating for, the, for, for this, this dialogue many, 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 many times, many years. But we talk and the things remain there. You yes, I mean, I felt concerned with the whole proceed, Madam Chair. Moving on, uh, Uganda Breweries has uh, committed uh, to train at least 200 staff in the hospitality sector in its quest to elevate the industry standards. Now, this upskill program was announced by the Diageo Reserve Brand Ambassador at UBL, Agaba Tumsime. Let's have more in this story. 
The two months dear Juba Academy intends to influence better guest experiences in the hospitality industry. People to be trained in this exercise are business owners, employees, bar attendants, waiters, waitresses and other stakeholders to enhance world-class hospitality practices. This delivery and the standard of excellent operations in these outlets, others will emulate them. So first of all, we're starting with training of bar owners and managers. Secondly, we will go into on-premise training. Training, um, as opposed to what was happening before, we go into a competition and then we're done. Here we're going to actually maintain all the bartenders that we have trained um, you know, with this particular program. Um, we'll engage them into ongoing you know, competitions to hold the tension. The initiative is expected to create approximately 2,000 jobs to the youth and expose them to the market demanding skills. And to establish a standard of service delivery that is on par with global standards. And uh, I think that's one thing that we're going to have to keep mentioning as we refer to the Agile Bar Academy is we are trying to leverage an awareness of international best practices. So many times people come to Uganda and they love the beauty of our nation. However, they lament certain elements of service delivery that they experience here. Consistency of that standard, whatever we must do in order to be able to achieve that, is what we're setting out to do with this year's Diageo Bar Academy program. And it will continue to scale up from 2,000, we're aiming for 10,000 in the next year. So we're really ambitious. Diageo Bar Academy is used to benchmark international best practices to enhance competencies of both hospitality staff and management. From a perspective of job creation, you can look at it one of two ways. They were already employed in bars at that particular time. But what it does is it creates opportunities for elevation. Because the same individual who was behind the bar at a junior level, named Gilbert in 2013-14, in is now an entrepreneur. He's now a business owner. He is now an employer. He has now himself created jobs for, for more than... 10, 15 people through his own business. Uganda Buaris Limited commits to implement the Ajuba Academy of 2022-2023 with that most inclusivity of men and women to create positive, sustainable contributions. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. Thanks, Lydia, for that story there. To Makere now, where uh, preparations for Makere University convocation are in high gear, as different alumni have come out to express interest in heading the body. George Turiamreva and Ruto Grace are among the different alumni that have expressed interest to contest in this race. Take a watch. Naturally, you have to zero on one. One, um, uh, George is a staff of Makere University and he has been in the struggles of staff for a good time. And he knows the dynamics of Makere University structures. And uh, I feel he's, um, he's better knowledgeable than the inside working of uh, the university than somebody else. So, and we feel as staff, it will be more accessible to staff. Being a member of staff, and also the office of the convocation is within the university. Currently, we have uh, Makere convocations coming up, elections coming up, and so um, we constituted a team. The team is led by the chairperson, who is called George Toria Mureba Mugabe, and uh, he has also been working at Makere University for the last 18 years of his life. He has served in different capacities. He started as an accounts assistant and he's kept rising up the ranks. At some point he was the head of expenditure and currently he, aids, he heads the grants and administration of, um, uh, it's called the Grants Administration Management Support Unit, GAMSU. That's what he heads currently. And uh, so we constituted a team. We have been looking at the convocation as a sleeping giant. Convocation was created as an association that uh, as a, an association for the staff and the alumni. 
So you can imagine the alumni of Makere since 1922. All, the, all those people form the convocation. However, the active members are those who subscribe because you know sometimes people probably don't have time to be part of that association. So oftentimes you're required to subscribe so that you can actively participate. It is coming to 11 minutes after one in the studios of UBC TV. We'll now take a short break, but uh, coming up after that break, we'll be expecting to talk to Mr. Lumu Richard, who is a counselor and also a teacher for adolescents and the youth, and be looking at uh, um, you know, grooming the boy child and the values and its re relevance in today's society. It's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. Welcome to the Living Room Stadium. It's the FIFA World Cup. The match is about to start. Food and drink ready. There's no space left for anyone. Come on, get your lucky chair. Take your usual spot. Even the puppy has one. It's preparation time. You can feel the tension in the air. And you do have everything you need to believe. The festive season is here and it's Christmas in 4G from Airtel. Get the most affordable 4G smartphone in Uganda. Now heavily discounted from 250,000 shillings to 150,000 shillings only. Yes, 150,000 shillings only to keep you connected to your loved ones this holiday season. Dell Star 175 Star 94 Hash to activate free 1GB instantly and 100% double data on all weekly and monthly battles for three months. Get one today while stock lasts from the nearest Airtel shop. Happy holidays this festive season with Airtel, the smartphone network. Welcome to Friends Stadium. Everybody's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude, it's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? Paying for groceries the old way. Three, four, yeah. <laughs> Allow me. Paying for groceries with the My Airtel app. You have the power in your pocket. The power to conveniently pay for goods and services. Unlock that power with the My Airtel app. Visit the App Store or Google Play now. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> Get yourself a Zuku TV decoder and satellite dish today at a low price of only 105,000 Ugandan shillings. Add a Zuku decoder at only 60,000 Ugandan shillings and enjoy your favorite movies, series, kids entertainment, music, local and international news and lots more. Enjoy amazing packages like Zuku Smart, Zuku Smart Plus, Zuku Classic, Zuku Premium and Zuku Asia. Get connected today. Zuku, life got better. We can't tolerate sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is unacceptable in our school. 
Because a good school equals a better life. Raising Voices. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap. Avoid handshaking and hugging. Avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 or send a free SMS to your report on 8500. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health Organization. <laughs> it's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. The Tales of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello? Hello? This is Kasozi. How can I help you? Hey, Kasozi, my brother. Long time. We last met when we were at campus. It's been a while, but you are the person I'm looking for. Campus? Really? Hey, hey, you don't remember me. Okay, so how can I help you? I'm stuck in Gulu making millions, and I need to urgently send money to my sick mother. Mm -hmm. But I can't find any mobile money agent near me. I've sent the money to your phone, as you can see the message. Eh? It might take a few minutes to come through, but I urgently need you to send the money to my mother. Let me send you her number, and you send it to her chap chap. Ah, my friend. I'm afraid your mom is going to die. What? Because I don't know you, I never went to campus, and I'm also in Guru. So can we meet at CPS? We talk about it. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Tofira, refrain from unnecessary engagement with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by the Uganda Communications Commission. Welcome back from that break and this is Lunchtime News here on UBC TV. A warm welcome to those of you just joining us. My name is Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma. Now, different uh, health institutions across the globe are meeting at uh, Uganda Virus Institute uh, in Entebbe to discuss efficacy of some medicines. And uh, they do hope that uh, by the end of the discussion, they'll have found a possible solution to address uh, the challenge. They have, however, launched a project to carry out uh, study findings uh, that will be used on the same issue. At the same event, uh, Professor Ponciano Kalebu, who is the director of uh, Uganda Virus Research Institute, explained why the institute has taken long uh, to research about HIV AIDS uh, vaccine. We are coming together at different institutions uh, uh, led by Uganda Virus Institute, uh, the MRC, Kilifi, as you have heard, our colleagues in the UK. And uh, uh, Professor Allison will tell you the background to this and where we're going. But we as UVRI, we're very excited uh, because vaccines are very, very important to us. Uh, for those who attended uh, my opening remarks, I gave the background of vaccine work at this institute that dates back to the 1940s when we worked on the Rift Valley uh, fever vaccine. So it's quite an important project for us uh, that will really contribute to we are able to get COVID vaccine very quickly, uh, mostly because of the science that has been done looking at other infections like HIV, 
TB, malaria, and other infections. A lot of that knowledge in terms of science, in terms of partnerships, collaboration, was the one that really helped to move the COVID vaccine very quickly. To Arua now, where Uganda Muslim Supreme Council in Arua District is in plans to open up a new cemetery after reports of the current one being full. Now, in lieu of uh, this, the Muslim uh, Supreme Council has organized a fundraising uh, ceremony where Minister Evelyn Anite is expected to be the chief guest to start a cemetery at Manibe in Arua City. Our body is there. You must first uh, dig out uh, somebody who was already buried there. For us Muslims, that means we are disturbing the peace of the dead. Uh, because of that reason, uh, the Uganda Muslim Spring Council sat down to see that uh, we get a new place. Uh, good enough, they got for us land at Oreku. You can see is what we have displayed here. A modern latrine, which we estimated around 30 million ceilings. We wanted to have a shed, which is about 50 plus million ceilings. We wanted to have a house. That's also around 50 million. We wanted to have a modern ambulance, which we estimated to cost about 250 plus. And we wanted to buy a lorry, a tipper lorry, a big one, which we're estimating at around 150 to 200. But for now, it needs a lot of sensitization because people still believe that their dead bodies who were there should not be tempered with. But for now, we are saying, since we have the land, and that land is very big, we are not going to disturb the peace of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are laid down there. This place is bought, will be bought, and is bought for all the dead bodies of Muslims. So, even if you are in Kibuli, there is no sect with the death. Even if you are Uganda Muslim Spring Council, there is no sect with the death. So, I'm clearing the doubt of those who are thinking that uh, this issue of sex should be brought in this fundraising. Please clear that doubt, come and contribute for this fundraising. It's a development for Muslims, for all Muslims, those who are not at born. Now, as Alia mentioned, uh, we we are going to look at, uh, uh, at, at grooming the boy child and uh, of course uh, this is uh, we're looking at the values and the relevance of grooming a boy child and um, uh, it, this is a time when students are at home on holidays uh, with their parents but there is this responsibility of the parents and uh, most times you find that uh, the boy child has actually been forgotten and much of the attention is given to the girl child. We've heard of you know, programs like Iksakate organized by Buganda Kingdom where you find the, the, the main target is normally the girls. Uh, but this afternoon uh, we are privileged to be joined in the studio uh, by Mr. Uh, Lumo uh, uh, Richard who is a teacher but also at the same time a counsellor especially um, uh, he, he counsels uh, the, the youth, the young boys and girls and we're looking at uh, uh, grooming the boy child, the relevance and uh, uh, you know values of grooming a boy child uh, in society. Uh, Mr. Lumo, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Glad to have you here. And of course, so we'll go straight into uh, this matter. And, and your program uh, it says seven days of responsible talks. Tell us more. Shed more light on this. Yeah, seven days of responsible talks. It's codenamed as seven dots. It targets boys from five to 18 years. But as you look at, at the society, we, took, we, we, we thought of a program that can bring boys together talk to the boys because as you can look at the society there are so many challenges that are facing our boys the girls have gotten so many chances of being talked to and actually when you look at our situation today that's why there are so many single mothers there are so many men who are not taking responsibility of their full responsibility as fathers mm -hmm. and there are so many boys who are not helping out with their parents uh, to, to help the young boys or the siblings and their boys and the society expects a boy to know 
So that's why we've come up with this, uh, with the seven days of response botox. It's to be held at Kaboja, uh, Mugwanya Preparatory School, Kaboja. Okay. Why? Because we want to see how best we can work hand in hand with the boys, with the parents, and the schools to see to it that we groom a responsible by boy who is a good listener, a responsible one who will be able to take on his responsibilities as a man and as a father in future and also as a leader. Exactly. Uh, of course, uh, uh, that is the target group, boys. And uh, uh, do we expect parents to pay for this uh, uh, initiative here? Yeah, the parents are, are going to basically to sponsor uh, them into feeding. The feeding, mm -hmm. that is uh, about 200,000 shillings for one full week. And mm -hmm. another interesting bit of it is that uh, I, we believe that's going to the, going to the days when our children used to study uh, without knowing what they are going to do. Mm -hmm. Another special thing in these seven days of responsible talks is that we are going to do a multiple intelligence tests. And mm -hmm. when we do them, we are going to let the parents know what career their children are likely to take on and the relevant courses that is like to take on uh, after school. So as he is growing up, the parent knows exactly what his son is going to do and how he or she can prepare him into what he's going to do uh, after school. So this kind of uh, 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 employers, what they are looking for is the experience. The child will already have the experience. Why? Mm -hmm. Because from primary to secondary, the parent knows exactly what kind of career the boy is to take on. Mm -hmm. And that is all going to be done during the seven days of responsible talks. Okay, uh, Lumu, thank you. Thank you uh, so much for that. But let's look at one, uh, one thing that uh, is actually affecting our children today, especially mm -hmm. uh, those uh, in, in secondary uh, uh, schools. And this is you find that the morals in our society, not only here in Uganda, but mm. all over the world, mm. the morals have actually dwindled. They have gone down. Mm. You find that uh, a 13-year-old boy or girl mm. is engaged. Today, they are sexually active. Mm. And uh, my question is, are we going to, to have some you know, people to talk to these boys about all these things, the morals? We need an upright uh, you know, uh, society uh, uh, whereby we, f we have... Uh, children, uh, these are the, the, the future leaders, mm. children who have good morals, children who will not uh, embrace corruption as it is today, you find so many people uh, in offices are embracing corruption. So do we expect some people to talk, to touch these topics? Thank you very much. Those are some of the concerns and the reasons why we started Seven Dots. We are on a daily basis, on a daily basis, and we are happy to, cut, to partner with Kampala Metropolitan and Police, mm. it's going to be with us. We are going to talk to the boys of, uh, about all such concerns, the moral decay in our societies. Look at our communities today. Our sons are being targeted by homosexuals. Effective decision making. Mm -hmm. The girls' chapter will come in because the girls also have their chapter. Uh, because uh, there are so many challenges with the girls now. So we are going to look at every challenge that is facing a boy child. Mm -hmm. And we, that's why we're having also the police the lawmakers, different counselors are going to be there, the teachers are going to be there, different professions are going to be there, parents on an, an individual pe uh, basis will be coming to talk to the boys. What should we expect from you as a boy? So on a daily basis, we are going to have people going to be talking about uh, different, uh, different, as subjects. different as subjects. subjects on a daily basis. Okay, uh, as, as we wind up, what is uh, your final word to, to, first of all, the boys that you target, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the, that, that is the target group, mm -hmm. but also to the parents and the country at large? To the boys, to the parents and the country at large, uh, we will come into the seven days of responsible talks. This program will not leave you the boy and you the parent. The expectations of your boy from your boy should be high. You the boy who is coming for the seven dots, expect the best out of the seven days of responsible talks. And to you the parent, and to you my fellow countrymen, you will not have a, a, a program of this kind. So far this is the first of its kind. Yes, we've had- Targeting the, boys. Targeting boys. The, yes, we've had camps and the rest of that, but we believe this is a unique program that is targeting boys of respo responsible boys who are going to be beneficial to all of us and the country at large. I welcome you all to Seven Dots. Thank you so much, uh, viewer. This has been uh, Mr. Lumo Richard, who is a teacher and counselor, and um, he's been explaining to us about his program. That is the Seven Days of Responsible Talks, and that will be at Kaboja. Uh,
Papua Jack Preparatory, uh, you know, and uh, of course we expect uh, most of you to at least send your boys uh, to be there. I mean, this is a very long uh, uh, holiday for uh, our children, so this comes in handy to see that at least uh, we groom them to become responsible, you know, fathers, responsible leaders in future. Thank you so much for having kept us company. My name is Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma. See you some other time. Inspiring Uganda.